Frisbee-based competitions. Are you kidding? She, I started the main Frisbee golf club at Cornell. I live to froth. Are you in my Frisbee golf league? Oh, yeah. I play for the super spinners. You mean golf? Froth! Frisbee golf, Jerry! Golf with a Frisbee! And there's Frisbee golf, and, and you go snow sledding on cafeteria trays. Play a little Frisbee golf with Condi Rice and Dick Cheney. You guys really think there's a police matter to get your Frisbee back? <laughs> Froth is not a sport. Hey, we have a newsletter. Shut up, Glaze. Like Frisbee golf, I'm glad I tried it once. All right, we're all familiar with the game of golf, right? But have you ever heard of disc golf? I am Chris Brophy. I'm John Heaton. My name is Marcus Cisneros. My name is John Weesey. I think it helps people stay sane. It helps people be good citizens. The game of golf is really a great game, but unfortunately it's really not accessible for a lot of people, whether it's the time involved in a round or the startup costs to, to get the equipment. It, there's something about man versus himself. There's no LeBron-sized guy trying to swat the disc out of your hands. It's really you and the course, and it's purely creative. There's only so much you can do to shape a flight of a ball in regular golf, yet disc golf, it's infinitely more creative. Disc golf makes it extremely accessible to the masses. Most people, they never heard of disc golf, but they've heard of a Frisbee, so I translated into Frisbee golf. So it was actually Frisbee golf before it was disc golf. Now I heard about this and my first question is why not call it Frisbee golf? Why can't you just say Frisbee golf? You know what happened was, and they used to call it Frisbee golf, but yeah. in 1983 they changed the disc to be more of a bevel edge pattern and of a champion. Yes. And they made it more of a less of a throwing game. Yes. And more of a disc golf game like dynamic. Yes. So it's like traditional ball golf. <laughs> Let's call it Frisbee golf from now on, shall we? That's easy. I have been playing for a couple of decades now and at first, when, when I first started playing and really got into disc golf, Almost nobody would heard of it. And it's tough for me too, working at Innova, where you know we definitely don't use the F word, <laughs> Frisbee golf. But when you're talking to a little old lady that's never heard of it, they, it's kind of quicker to get it. Oh, okay, Frisbee golf. Well, I try to explain to them, it's, it's like ball golf. You have tee pads, and then you have baskets instead of holes, and it's 18 holes, and there's par threes. It all really started here at uh, beautiful La Mirada course um, with our owner, and President Dave Dunapace. Um, at this point, they were playing Frisbee golf, and it was with Frisbees. Well, back then, actually, they didn't have beveled edge discs back then. For example, you'd be playing with like a midnight flyer, okay? They would inject uh, glow material in here to make it heavier than this disc here. And as uh, as the story goes, as I understand it, Dave just started tinkering, just started experimenting with ways to be able to make the Frisbees fly farther, fly faster, have a competitive advantage. We actually had events that were held at uh, the Rose Bowl. Uh, Dave Dunapace uh, is a 1981 uh, distance champion, and Dunapace needs to go ahead and get a good throw to come on up. Okay, the crowd always looking for that long one out there. Even though this may be a demonstration, these competitors are going all out against one another. You can see that excellent extension in there by Dunapace. This here is like one of the first beveled edge discs that was made in 1983. And that was made by Dave Dunapace. It's just like when you have uh, your clubs for, for ball golf. Okay, you have your putters, you have your pitching wedges, you know, you have your irons and you have your woods. So we'll have our putters, or our uh, mid-range discs, the fairway drivers, the drivers, and then the distance drivers. You know, for me, and, and this is how it went for me, I was a, a Frisbee player. I took a job in a city I didn't know anyone, and I drove there, moved in, 
and basically went to a, a big city festival with a disc. And I saw some guys playing catch and I joined, I joined, with, joined up with them playing catch and they were like, hey, have you ever played Ultimate? And I was like, well, I've heard of it, I played a little bit and hooked up with them and met a bunch of friends, then got turned on to disc golf. The park that my family would go to just to picnic in, to play in the great outdoors, uh, happens to be where the first disc golf course was installed. Definitely was playing frisbee already, just catch type things. And uh, so, had an older brother that could drive, so we got over to the course as often as we could and uh, became a cheap recreation. And, you know, immediately was hooked, played all the time, and then found out, hey, there's a tournament here, you know, in two weeks. So I was like, oh, I'll do it. So I played, and I think I came in second place in the first ever tournament I ever played in and won 500 bucks. My parents started paying attention. Really, you won $500 playing Frisbee? Um, and played a few more events that year, did well enough, and was awarded the Professional Disc Golf Association Rookie of the Year in 1988. Most courses are free to play. Most courses are in a park setting. Most courses, it's gonna take maybe an hour and a half to play instead of you know, a four hour ball golf round. There's no green fees, no uh, tee times. You can just come out and play whenever you have that time. And so I end up playing by myself a lot. That's a great, enjoyable time to kind of de-stress from the work day before I go home to the family. I know for myself, playing it, seeing it, seeing how much fun it is, seeing how good it is, you know, it's as competitive as you want it to be or it's just family fun and friends and your kids or whatever level of it you want. It's, it's really a, a sport for everyone. It's a sport on the rise here in mid-Missouri that has many ball golfers trading in their clubs for discs. Disc golf, have you ever played? The clank of the change is the most exciting sound for someone playing disc golf. The object of the game is simple. Throw a plastic disc like this into a metal basket in as few throws as possible. What's the deal with airplane peanuts? <laughs> yeah, sure, come on. Young and old, rich and poor, it, is, it hasn't been a, a, you know, some elitist type of sport. You can play it at whatever level you want to play it at. You can play it to the top levels of professionals if you have the skill set. I think part of it is the people who play it love it so much. They want to expose it. They are so, they're so proud of it. There's been no one in charge of it growing it. It's been grassroots, town by town, course by course. More people come and get addicted. The grassroots swell now is so big and so strong. You know, they think that there's about 10 million people that play disc golf regularly. I mean, that's part of the fun of it, and that's part of the pride of everyone who plays disc golf, is educating everyone they run into. Have you heard about this sport, and it's so cool, and you know, I look at these discs and what you do and all that. There really is kind of an addictive element to it. A lot of the positives of people just really just wanting to get better. It, there's something kind of zen about just perfecting a craft. If I have a particularly busy stretch of weeks where I just cannot get out, and play, I start to go a little bit stir crazy and I've got to get back out and throw. I think just watching that, that perfect flight example was Monday, all right? I came up to a shot, you know, into a heavy wind. I was thinking of putting it and I said, well, uh, this is not a putt shot. So I took my, my mid range, my gauge, and I threw it, you know, to lay it up and it just went in the basket, you know. So stuff like that, it's like, oh, it's like, it was great, you know? <laughs> the finesse that's involved, and the, the thinking that's involved, how do I, what's my best route, what, how can I get out of this predicament, how can I make the best shot? I honestly, when I first heard the term frisbee golf, I was hooked. Just hearing those two words put together, frisbee golf, <gasps> ding, I'm in, all in. I started uh, in 1982 as a professional. The 1983 Mazi US Open uh, was here at La Mirada. Third shot from 16A is from Marcus Cisneros. Come on. Uh, that tournament was actually, you had to actually qualify. It was actually an overall event, not just disc golf. 
So they had uh, distance, they had uh, freestyle, they had uh, MTA, which is maximum time aloft. Dave Dunapace, yeah, who's actually in the tournament, and he won that uh, that particular uh, disc golf event. La Mirada Disc Golf Course is one of the first uh, in the sport, and. Uh, been well established here in La Mirada over that period of time. This course is very important. It's it's always been a championship level course. We used to have lots of people traveling from you know all over the United States to come to play the big tournaments here. I remember the announcer on the uh, videotape that it was on at the time introducing it as La Mirada where the grass is always green and uh, that's one thing that you see here at La Mirada disc golf course that you don't see at most disc golf courses is all the fairways are manicured grass. Well, La Mirada was kind of like, like the base, okay? It's like it started here, probably the second disc golf course to have baskets in it. Many of us would consider it the jewel of Southern California, I would. With the two courses here, with you know the lakeside, it wraps around the lake, these gorgeous trees, the variety of trees, the rolling green hills. I try to explain this to my mom, she doesn't always get it. She doesn't play disc golf, she doesn't always get it. But mom, the beauty that I'm surrounded by every day, even if it's you know, just a little park setting like this, uh, but sometimes we're off in the forest or whatever, but, but La Mirada is just, it's gorgeous, you know? We have another house in Denver. Well, the weekends uh, I set up by, uh, okay, uh, hole 14 over there by the gymnasium. Uh, I bring a table out for disc, I bring coolers out for drinks, uh, I pop up a canopy, you know, stay in the shade and uh, just relax there and, you know, meet people, help them choose the right disc. I generally buy discs uh, to sell to newer players. He's going left now. Of it. I tell them, it's like, you know, you come here and when I give you a free lesson, okay, it's not just to help you, it's also to help me find the right disc to put in your hands. So the next time I see you, right, I say, hey, this is the disc that you need. Still got some magic left. Yeah, it does. These are awesome. Yeah. So we'll play for these ones. These are the end of the year. So we'll play for this one at the end of the year. He's got another set of tags that will start off for another year. I actually shot my 11 under to hit number for, to take number one for the year for last year. See ya. Wow. I hope that blue one works. <laughs> and that one's nice and safe. Or not? <laughs> Oh, that's money. <laughs> um, it, you know, it has always been kind of a little counterculture sport. It was considered a little bit hippie-ish, I think, at times. And you'd see the guys in the tie-dyed shirt. and That's the sound I hear in my dreams, the sweet sound of chains. You know, maybe there were people smoking weed and some of that stuff going on. And the reality is, is you're going to see that on a golf course, too. It's not that different. They're just wearing polo shirts, maybe instead of tie dyes. You still see guys carrying, you know, ice chests with rollers that, you know, they got a case of beer in there and they're having a great time. And it's just a place where that's where they go do their drinking. And, you know, I've read stories online of you know guys getting pulled over and uh, asked where he's coming from. He's like, oh, I was just playing disc golf, and then all of a sudden the guy wants to search his car. It's definitely with proper marketing has moved away from that mindset largely, I would say. Virtually all my friends are involved somehow in this game, um, and, and they go back a long time. You, you start meeting people, you're, 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 you're playing with them, and when you play in tournaments, okay, you learn a lot of, about a person playing tournaments, and you play tournaments every week, you know, you're seeing the same people week in, week out, you know? It's kind of, it becomes like a, like a family thing. Like I traveled for business and, and it was constantly had my suitcase, suits, and my disc golf bag. And so I'd get done with work and head to the closest disc golf course and that's how I got to play so many, uh, so many courses. Everybody's gathered around at the beginning of the tournament, right, uh, practicing putting and meeting old people. And these tournaments, it's, they're like family reunions. And it really feels like that and the amount of hugs and love and high fives and, you know, people that, that I've been seeing for most of my life now and even if you don't you don't see him every day but it's that once a year that you see that person you know kind of like seeing an old cousin or something. Uh, I've played in tournaments where on my card there was a 
ER doctor, landscape maintenance guy for the city of Huntington Beach, just general people from general walks of life that probably wouldn't be in conversation a whole lot if it wasn't for disc golf that they were playing and disc golf is the commonality. There's an amazing sense of community and you really can go anywhere in the world and you're welcomed. Come on in bud, you're a disc golfer, let's, let's go play. Hi Pooch, you're awesome. Can you go shades on that dog? Yeah. He's just rocking them up too, like, I don't need them right now. Yeah. <laughs> Nico? I got a four. Skip yeah, the Tommy. Hell yeah. At uh, Biola University, we're a liberal arts education, so that includes physical activity. All of our students have to have four units of PE credit. So the approach is there, and you can see the lines are a lot further out. Okay, and then we have six tries from there? Yeah, you have six attempts from both places, and we'll throw out the low score. Our student enrollment had increased to the point where we no longer could fit all of our PE classes onto campus facilities. So I offered to teach a disc golf class, and uh, they said, that sounds great. And I would say the overwhelming majority of people have never played before, and uh, hopefully we find a few out of those that uh, desire to continue to play. So today, uh, I'm not gonna take roll. The roll sheet will be the scorecard. Um, you can play leg side, back side, whichever you want. It's set up right now for the West Coast Championships. So if you still have outside class requirement times to get out and practice whatever, if you wanna come out and watch for an hour, I think you can learn as much in that hour as you can going out and throwing for another hour. Uh, today we're having the class uh, score their rounds. We don't score every day. It's up to the students. Uh, if they want to keep score, they can. But again, I approach it from a recreational, not solely competitive uh, approach to the game. So today they're keeping scores. We kept scores in a round earlier in the semester. And the purpose of keeping scores today is to compare their marks from their earlier rounds that they scored to today and hopefully see that improvement that's taken place throughout the semester. What I enjoy about introducing people to the sport is that a lot of people early on in life did not have success on an athletic venue and uh, disc golf is something that has a pretty quick learning curve. Uh, you can never have played before and come out and uh, start to play and dial in your throws pretty quickly. Oh, so we have to get it Make sure you get this on the camera. Get your raffle tickets on in case you can all learn to win a voodoo bag. My name's Jeff Sport. I run uh, West Coast Disc Golf here in SoCal. We just ran a PDGA A-tier event here at La Mirada. Over the past few years, we just haven't had the big events to draw the top pros. It's something that we do to promote our course and promote disc golf in the area. It showcases the best players in the world. We had, I'd say, 300 spectators following the lead car. We had Paul McBeth out, Dave Felberg, you know, a lot of our Locals, Philo, Brathwaite, uh, Max Nichols, uh, Paul came out with Nate Sexton, so we had a ton of top guys in town, and it was just a really special event. But it does showcase the next level of where disc golf can be and, and has been growing and headed towards. It kind of brings us all together and, you know, just working on the course, and, you know, we'll feel it here at the course for months because right now it's as good as it's looked all year long. Seeing everybody's face after the weekend. I mean, all the thank yous that we get, and it's just amazing. You know, I, I don't even really know how to describe it. It's not about money at all. It's, you know, to showcase this, the game, have these players come and play, and it's just awesome. Real quick, I just want to say shout out to West Coast Disc Golf. I mean, if you guys took a look at that gallery that we had out there, we had yeah. world champions, Woo! Dave Felberg, Paul McBeth, back at La Mirada. A lot of you guys got to meet my grandma. She just turned 80 and spent her whole Mother's Day walking around this park. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
how about having a second place finish to make that? I mean, the best player in the world. The last few times I played, I lost to number one and number two. So I must be doing something right. Yeah. So many familiar faces, so many nice words. I had so many great memories here early in my career. This isn't my stage, it's Paul McBeth. So I just want to say thanks to West Coast Disco. I can't wait to come back to SoCal and play, so bigger and better next year. That's right. All right. One of the things that really helped thrust golf into the mainstream was when they started getting involved with charities and realized they needed to give back. Well, St. Jude Children's Research Hospital is a, a facility in Memphis, Tennessee that treats uh, children with childhood cancers and sickle cell anemia. They specialize in several things. All this is done without the family ever paying a bill. What's happening is the Professional Disc Golf Association is partnering with St. Jude. 2015 is the first annual St. Jude Disc Golf Charity Invitational. It's to launch this partnership between St. Jude and the Professional Disc Golf Association. I'm playing in it. Um, it's going to be a, it should be a really special tournament um, working to help the kids at St. Jude, which is a donation funded hospital, which is pretty amazing. Um, nobody's turned away and they have a lot of real special kids there that, that get real special care. So our goal is moving forward that this will continue and grow and we'll tap into the energy and the pride that disc golf has and bring it together into this philanthropic uh, effort to raise money to support the efforts of St. Jude. This, this event is going to be amazing. They're raising money for St. Jude's. There's all sorts of things going on on the PDGA website about uh, what, what they're doing, who's raising money. Let's help make this pretty amazing for the sport of disc golf. Yes, we are going to do this. This is for the kids but watch what it does for us also. This is a way to pay back an appreciation, and it turns out it's, it, you know, it's really an extraordinary cause. Disc golf, the glass blown open. Billy Angle's first throw on the 380 foot par three is right on target. Whoa. That's an ace when it comes to disc. at an amazing point right now in its history. There's a great energy going on. We keep seeing all these videos. We just got on ESPN again uh, just recently. These, these kids are training. We have athletes involved in the sport now. You know, our world champ, he's starting to make money. You know, when I first started out, it was like everybody had their own job and then they just played disc golf. It's a full-time job. They are throwing thousands of discs a week. I think if you did a, you know, 10 years ago, ask the population how many had heard of disc golf, it had been 20, 30 percent. Now it's probably 60, 70 percent, and there's no reason why, you know, it won't be the most participated in sport on earth in 10 or 20 years from now. What other sports are teaching etiquette and courtesy and honor and integrity? We will have more disc golf courses in the ground than regular golf courses here in America within the next couple of years that we're, we're about to pass them. There's no stopping it now. It's gone too far. It's past that, like, hit that critical mass where there's too many people that just love it. One of the things that I find is really a blessing about being addicted to disc golf is all the ways that I want to make my life better so I can be a better disc golfer. Looking out, hey, when I'm 90, I want to still play disc golf. It has me eating right, you know, trying to go to bed early and get rest and like all these things that who knows what I'd be doing? You know, I just think there's an enormous upside to the sport and um, I'm happy. You know, it's, it's a thrilling to be a part of at this point in its history. I think golf in general is magical. And I think that it um, emulates life, a round of golf. You can make it anything you want. You get to that first tee and that round, it, I mean, your scorecard is a blank slate and you get to fill that in just like we get to fill in our days. And, and make it what we want. You might get a hole in one, 
Um, you are going to be facing adversity at some point and how you react to that. If you don't become a better person, you end up having to quit <laughs> because you're going to kick your bag and you're going to make enemies of your friends. And I don't want to give, you know, say, hey, disc golf's going to save the world, but disc golf's going to save the world. <laughs>